understanding cultural differences, including do's and don'ts. First, here are some interesting facts. India is the world's largest democracy and has the second largest population at 1.3 billion people. There are 22 major languages with over 700 dialects. The predominant religion is Hinduism at over 79%. Even though Christianity is only 2.5%, there are 30 million Christians in India. The Indian railway system is vast and employs over 1.5 million people, making it one of the largest employers in the world. And 23 million people per day travel on these trains. Over 100 million Indians live on less than $2 a day, while at the same time, India has the fourth highest number of billionaires in the world at 104. So there is extreme inequality between the wealthy and the poor. Good cultural differences. The guest is God. In India, it is a true honor to have a guest, and doubly so if it's a foreign visitor. This is because they have a beautiful proverb, which means the guest is equivalent to God. For this reason, there is a very good chance you'll be invited into someone's home. The people are genuine and friendly. We have met some of the most kind-hearted and generous people we've ever known during our travels in India. Even though these people didn't have much money, they welcomed us into their homes and spoiled us with the most delicious food ever. Spirituality and religion thrive. On every street corner in India, you will find a religious statue or place of worship. It's the birthplace of yoga, meditation, Ayurvedic healthcare, and the concept of enlightenment. Indians try to offer amazing service. India is known for being a service-oriented culture, and almost everyone tries very hard to please. Exquisite color creates eye candy everywhere. Indians really love color. Whether it's the clothing, the food, the houses, everywhere you look, you will be overwhelmed by beautiful arrays of color. The resourcefulness and ingenuity is mind-blowing. While driving on the streets, you might actually find the most eye-opening resourcefulness. From people carrying a bed frame or a sheet of glass on the back of a motorcycle, to a truck so overladen with goods that the driver can barely see out the front window. This no doubt stems from the often extreme need to survive. India is actually a mostly peaceful nation. In fact, India hasn't invaded another country in over a thousand years, even though India itself has been invaded countless times. The crime rate is lower than in the U.S., and if you avoid big cities, you should generally feel safe. All of these cultural points that I'm about to share are from our own experiences as Western observers, and none of them are intended to offend anyone in any way. We are sharing them purely so that other Westerners are more prepared and to help reduce your possible culture shock. So here we go. Chaos is truly everywhere. Almost all road rules, including red lights, will be ignored. The streets are always bustling with people, livestock, and every kind of vehicle that you can imagine tooting their horns. Personal space is rarely respected. So whether you're looking at photos on your camera, lining up to catch a bus, or just standing on the street, there's a really high possibility that someone or even a whole group of people will approach you, nudge past you, or come a bit too close for comfort. With over a billion people in a relatively small space, this isn't surprising and it's not considered culturally rude. The caste system still exists. It's composed of priests known as Brahmins, warriors known as Kshatriyas, merchants known as Vaishyas, and workers known as Shudras. Unfortunately, this division seems to cause discrimination between the castes, and as a Westerner can get confusing without understanding the ins and outs. Most animals unfortunately get abused except for cows. This was especially shocking to me when I visited India. Be it a dog, a cat, a chicken, or an ox drawing a cart, animal abuse in India can be pretty surprising and seems to be everywhere. The one animal that is largely exempt from this abuse is the cow, and that's because it holds particular importance in the Hindu religion. Although you will often see cows eating trash, which is in many ways a different kind of abuse. 
almost everyone in India will try to get your money. Since over 100 million Indians are living on less than $2 a day, the struggle for survival is very real. The main thing is to have your wits about you and to be compassionate. One quick side note is that I suggest you don't give your money to beggars as you will likely attract a crowd. If you want to give money, find a charity or a school who will do a lot more good with the money. You should anticipate incessant staring. It doesn't seem to be rude to stare in India and you will find it can be overwhelming at times, but the main thing is to ignore it. Sometimes my husband and I just pretend we're celebrities and then it's more of a novelty than a problem. Lying or bending the truth. This is my least favorite topic because I don't like to stereotype. It may be due to communication difficulties, but it seems that often Indians don't have a problem with lying. Whether it's a taxi driver or a shop owner, there's a good chance that they will bend the truth or flat out lie if it helps them to make more money. I suggest that you try to get really well informed beforehand and ask the right questions, one that can't be simply answered by yes. Expect to see spitting. A lot of men use chewing tobacco, which means there can be a lot of spitting on the street. And many women don't have a problem spitting publicly when they need to. Littering and trash are ubiquitous across India. Unfortunately, it is yet to be understood that littering is a bad thing, and so the streets act as open trash cans. The trash then piles up, and then the solution is normally to set it on fire. 